guys, welcome to another exciting edition of Cammy's Comic Corner, the best of 2010 in my humble opinion episode. I'm your host as always, Cammy. Thank you, thank you, please, please. Shut up, shut up. It's just been a year, people, since the last episode. Anyways, in this episode, if you're not familiar with the in my humble opinion concept, it is, it's what I think was the best in writers, artists, series, story arcs, graphic novels, etc. of 2010. And your opinion does not matter. So you're going to, at this point in time, shut up and take it. In a way. But then again, that was what was told to me on my prom night anyway. But moving on to the, you know, best five writers of 2010, in my humble opinion. I'm going to go down the order. No particular order and no particular reason, except for the ones I give you. First up, we have Robert Kirkman. He had an amazing year with The Walking Dead, and then The Walking Dead on AMC, followed by Invincible, The Whole Invincible War, and many more uh, Skybound uh, imprints uh, at Image. The guy's just non-stop murder-writing machine. Also, we have Scott Snyder, who mainly is best known for American Vampire, but he started up on Detective uh, for DC, and so far it's just fantastic stuff. And if you like what happened in these past couple of arcs of American Vampire, he's only going to blow you away more in 2011, I can guarantee that. Uh, Gabriel Ba and Fabio Moon, Day Tripper Team, yes, and uh, do you think, okay, these guys are just artists, we'll classify them as such? No, 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 these guys blew me away with Day Tripper, they should get Eisners for Best People Ever, that's the category, Best People Ever, because of that series alone. Also, we have Jeff Johns, always a favorite of mine. We saw Green Lantern go through many twists and turns this year, many big events, and yet I was entertained all the way through. Oh, and by the way, he's doing Flash. He's doing all 30 million other books and titles at DC. The man deserves a vacation, a much-needed one, in fact. And finally, it's just a fan favorite of mine, Brian Q. Miller. I love the guy's work on Batgirl. He made that series fun again. And that's what was missing in that whole Bat family, was everything was so serious and dark. And here comes along Batgirl to balance it out nicely. Just, just for that one series alone, one title alone, is why he made my list. Because every time I picked up Batgirl, fantastic time. Went to the top of this reading stack every single week. So that is the best writers. Now on to the best artists. First up we have Amanda Connor. Why is she on here? Because a Power Girl. I've said it before, I'll say it again. She is the only artist allowed to work on Power Girl and draw Power Girl. The series was fun, the art was uh, amazing on that series, and, and because of it, it was fun. I don't know if that made sense, but she also was doing some covers this year, but mainly Power Girl is what I want to acknowledge her for. Thank you, Miss Connor, for being such a badass, uh, seriously. Also, Gabriel Bond, Bobby Moon, again, you know, they're in the writers and artists. Cameron, is that fair? Well, yes it is, because I said so. Uh, just the, uh, even though uh, Fabio was doing mainly the interiors and Gabriel the, uh, you know, the, the covers, it still blended together nicely and, you know, put in a dash of, uh, of Dave Stewart on colors and then, ooh, ooh, such, such good stuff with Day Tripper. Again, Day Tripper. Day Tripper, Day Tripper. That's all you hear. It's like, John Malkovich, John Malkovich. That's going to be Day Tripper, Day Tripper this episode. Also, Gabriel Hardman. Fantastic work with Jeff Parker on not only Atlas, but Hulk. He made Hulk interesting. He made him fun. He made the Red Hulk badass with all the all the the, the inks and the, and the stylings and just he, he looks like a madass you don't have to worry about just like oh jeff loves hulk again and like oh remember that event wasn't that pathetic and fun um also on this list tommy lee edwards he is mainly on the list because of turf is it done yet no but the three issues that did come out this year they were fantastically amazing they had great art uh having the whole time period and the different characters to play with in that story the man did wonders. Also, he was doing Torchwood as well. I haven't really read much of that comic, and it's not because I don't like Torchwood. I'm a huge fan of Captain Jack, but I just haven't had time, let alone the means, to actually access it. But, Tom Lee Edwards, good stuff. And finally, this year, in artists, Gabriel Rodriguez. He is best known for Lock and Key, and Lock and Key went exceptionally strong this year. And especially with the different, not only keys and, and scenarios that these poor kids are going through, but the one issue in particular of um, Keys to the Kingdom, where it was a nice little homage to Bill Watterson of Calvin and Hobbes fame. You know, the, the whole sparrows, and it was just gorgeous stuff. And the man is just a very talented individual, and I'd like to interview him sometime. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge, Mr. Rodriguez. Now, on to the series of 2010 that I really enjoyed. And again, you're going to probably be throwing, oh... DC bias! DC bias! Well, guess what? DC and Vertigo were just very, rather entertaining this year, and that's what I 
seem to drift towards us. Ooh, shiny light. So sorry, Marvel Zombies, maybe next year. But first up, we got Green Lantern. Again, like I said with Jeff Johns, the whole event and the whole different colored lanterns and how they how they dealt with it with Blackest Night and then, you know, spun off into Brightest Day. It's just been completely interesting and, and fun, accessible to people who like fun. How about that? But yes, Green Lantern, consistently great title. Another good title. Scalped from Vertigo. Jason Aaron has just put a non-stop thrill ride, making you just go holy shit after every page, after every issue. If you're collecting it in trades, you know, oh, I cannot wait to spoil the spoil it for you, so, you know, get ready. But for everyone else reading it, you know, issue to issue, don't you agree? Wasn't it great? Wasn't it fun? Can you believe what Dash... Anyway, anyway, getting up at ourselves. I can't wait to see what happens in 2011. Also... Strange Tales, Volume 2. See, here's the bone of the Marvel readers. I love it when independent artists are able to play in the company play box or the company uh, sandbox or whatever kind of box you keep materials in. And the, the results were just amazing. Uh, some of the higher name indie creators, like Jeff Lemire, Alex Robinson, you got to see a lot of different styles and a lot of different fun stories or serious stories in just this greatly contained series. I was a fan of the first volume, fan of the second volume. Hopefully in 2011 we'll see a volume three, and I'll be a fan of that as well. Also from Image, we have Chew. And Chew was just black humor. It has action. It has just an interesting concept, and it's still going strong. It wasn't just a one-hit wonder with the, oh, that whole first arc sold out, and it went into 15 multiple printings. No, 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 no. It's still going strong. It's still a contender, and it could be uh, up in the Walking Dead numbers, and we, if you give it some time, give it some years, can't wait to see what's going to be, uh, you know, revealed in 2011, as it were. And finally, from Vertigo, we have, uh, you know, come on, what's the keyword? What's the word of the episode? Day Tripper. Gabriel Ball. Fabio Moon. One of the best stories I've read in the past decade. I cannot wait for this to be collected in a nice little deluxe hardcover so you can just give it to friends instead of going, here's a couple of issues, how about you read those? It was a punch to the gut, issue after issue. You thought you knew what was going to happen, and then, sure enough, yeah, hell, you weren't even expecting it to happen. And they still pull the wool over your eyes and make you cry like a little bitch. Damn you! Bon Moon, but then also at the same time, uh, Namaste for giving me such an enjoyable series and a, a true example of what you can accomplish in the comic book medium. Now, moving on to my favorite one shot of 2010. Now, this was a hard one because it could have been just any, you know, any issue of any current run, or it could have just been a one shot. And I kind of pussied out, but I still settled for a rather good one shot. It was Hellboy in Mexico. You got Mike Mignola, you got Richard Corbin on art. The two of them were just, just, just. Knocking out of the ballpark, issue after issue of these one shots that they collaborated on together, or miniseries. And this one in particular, you got him with Luchadores, Hellboy with Luchadores, fighting vampires in Mexico, and then it ends in the ring. And it's just like, oh, it's so crazy, so amazing. And with Hellboy, well, with any Hellboy series nowadays, you can just hand off an issue to someone and say, hey, I'd like that. Enjoy it? Great. How about that movie? That was pretty good too, huh? But anyway, that's the one shot of 2010. And now on to favorite story arc of 20, 2010. And let me tell you again, it was pretty hard, but I gotta give it to Jeff Johns for The Flash, The Dastardly Death of the Rogues, where it takes place and, you know, they come back in the Flash, they, they accuse him, and he has to go. And it is, it's just amazing. I mean, I don't really want to even say what's the battle. Like, you should just take my word for it and go out and get the first trade. It's coming out soon! But yes, Jeff Johns The Flash with Francis Manipole, that arc in particular blew me away, reminded us why The Flash was fun again, and especially after that kind of a trip at the starting line with The Flash Rebirth. That wasn't so good, but the, the ongoing, especially that arc in particular, gorgeous. And finally, the graphic novel slash hardcover of 2011. Uh, it's either, it could be either or, and like I said, it was my book of the month for December. It is Super Fuckers by James Chacol. And it's Superfuckers by James Kacholka. No other book this year made me laugh as hard as it, uh, as it did. I, I was just completely floored. I was crying at one point. It was so hysterically funny. About warning, ma mature readers only, even though what the art may look like. It's going to knock your socks off. It's going to make you cry and, you know, pass around at the bar. But uh, you'll agree with me. If you ever have the chance to flip through this amazing graphic novel... That it is the bee's knees, it is the indeed the cat's pajamas. So that does it for the best of 2010 in my humble opinion episode. 
If you don't want to watch this video, or if you want more in-depth reasoning of why I chose these certain titles, check out Geeky Talkie episode 47. I had on Art, and I had on... What's his name? It's, it's a joke, because it was the same. It, it, Freddy. Okay, it's Art and Freddy from the fourth wall. They come on and, you know, share with me their favorites of 2010 as well, and we all have a nice little discussion. A little comic book orgasming orgy, I guess, of what was great, what wasn't. So you should go listen to that, not because of the orgasming orgy, which makes no sense whatsoever. I'm just rambling now. Also, I'm going to announce right here on the show what conventions I have planned for 2011. I'm going to be going to Emerald City Comic Con, Seattle, WonderCon, San Francisco, Comic Con, San Diego, and finally, trying to get Long Beach again, and that's going to be in, well, Long Beach, or, or... There's a Phoenix Comic Con that I might hit up as well. So, you will see the updates on the website. You can have buttons to donate money, etc. This has been Kami's Comic Corner. For more Kami's Comic Corner, give us head on over to www.kami'scomiccorner.com. I'm tired. I'm exhausted. Go leave me reviews on iTunes. Go download the Android app and the iTunes app. This is Kami. I've been your host, Kami. Have a good day. Yeah.